Welcome to the Dayton Superior Learning Center. This session, we will discuss the use and application of bridge overhang brackets and hangers used in the exterior forming of a bridge deck. Once again, thank you for your time. This presentation is intended for training purposes only. For technical specifications for this product mentioned in this training, refer to www.daytonsuperior.com. We are going to discuss bridge overhang brackets and hangers. This is a part two of two uh, sessions. All overhang brackets typically need to be designed to make sure they carry the loads that are going to be exerted on them. So today we are going to talk about the sections of the overhang with dimensions, the beam details and geometry, the screed load information that is required from the contractor as far as wheel loads and wheel spacing, what type of hanger the contractor is preferred to use, preferring to use, and the contractor spacing, the, uh, the contractor preferred spacing of the hangers. Uh, also going to be talking about the, what type of lumber the contractor is going to be using. Typical section through the beam, the exterior girder. Uh, you show the standard 45 degree clip on the hanger attaching to the overhang bracket. And what you're showing here is we are showing the interior hangers here that typically will not be used in a lot of projects anymore because of SIP decking, as we discussed in, section, in class one. Typically, we have a hanger here. This is a C60 type one pressed steel hanger. You can see it has a 90, 45 degree clip. The A denotation on this hanger uh, is there primarily denoting that we have a 45 degree angle clip here. The C60 type four, a press steel hanger. Once again, the 45 degree clip requires an A denotation. We also have here a interlock system here, making this probably one of the most preferred hangers if you do have removable wood forming to use this type of a hanger because of the locking mechanism on the girder right here that actually helps enable the overall strength of the product uh, reach its maximum goal of 6,000 pounds safe working load. We also have a C41 hanger or A. Once again, we saw this earlier in the, in the uh, type one for interior forming. Uh, here, we can also equip that with a 45-degree clip on the uh, one side, still maintaining a one-inch breakback and giving you the option so that when you have to strip this hanger, you basically strip it, then bend the last the piece of the drop-down here to break it or break off at one inch and having no steel exposed. A lot of times what you will see when the SIP decking is being used is they will use an SIP, uh, basically a uh, half hanger, typically because the SIP decking will be welded to the interior of the girder. Uh, this half hanger will actually uh, sit on the outside edge of the girder 
you'll have a weld consideration to put in place here where you actually weld the hanger. Uh, and there is a variety of hangers that go along with the uh, half weld on hangers, the C24. Uh, they uh, typically will depend on the application to the steel beam. So it may just be a bent plate like this, where you've got the 45 degree clip here, and then you've got a strap coming off of it that's actually rubbing in and against the uh, beam. So you're gonna end up putting a weld right in this region on both sides of the wire. And, or we can have just a straight shaft which have been attached to the Nelson studs that are sticking up off of the beam. On a precast application, we would have a C24 4 APR precast half hanger. Uh, these are pretty, pretty commonplace within all the precast industry. Um, all these hangers are relatively made so that they can be adjusted to whatever length you need. So these are minimum dimensions for these legs, especially for the vertical leg here on top of the beam uh, that attach to the metal 45 degree clip. Uh, the rest of these here, as you can see, six inch, eight inch, and six inch minimum, the Hangers can be as much as 24 inch, 26 inch, uh, with the same uh, six inch return and a two inch tail on it. We can also do a C68 tie down hanger back to steel beams now. Uh, this steel beam hanger here basically will attach to the backside of the clip. It'll come off. You can hang your overhang bracket from it. This gives you a 6,000 pound safe work, working load. We can also have a C25 adjustable half hanger. This half hanger gets attached with two clips, uh, both 3 8 and 7 8 uh, stirrups. Uh, basically enables the clips, uh, clips actually lock in and around the Nelson stud or rebar exposed on the concrete girders. And they're all designed to support an overhang bracket. So the C49 overhang bracket is the bracket of choice in the marketplace. Uh, it is cop the most copied overhang bracket in the marketplace. Uh, Basically, the standard for this overhang bracket are the C49, our C49 D, and our C49 Junior. All of those brackets have a safe working load of 3,750 pounds on the diagonal leg. The C49 and the C49 D have a 54 inch horizontal member. The difference between the two brackets is the uh, vertical leg adjustment. The standard C49 adjusts from 30 to 50 inches and then 50 to 70 inches. The vertical leg typically has uh, two components, you have an outside leg and an inside leg. The outside leg typically is designed with holes at every two inches on center. And the only difference between the D and the C49 is the overall length of that pipe. That also coincides with the diagonal also. As you increase, obviously, the drop down capacity of the vertical leg, you have to make the diagonal leg longer. So, once again, we do the same thing. We actually incorporate a longer di outside diagonal pipe with the butt bar on the end. 
Typical bolts for all these, we recommend a half inch 13 MC type A325 galvanized bolt. We recommend galvanized because uh, standard concrete uh, hits a bolt, standard not protected bolt, a plain bolt. What will happen is you will start rusting immediately. The junior bracket has a Diagonal capacity is 3,750 pounds, just like its bigger brothers. And the only difference here is the junior bracket is only 27 inches in horizontal uh, member, member length, and the vertical length is only adjustable from 16 to 28 inches. You can also field modify a standard C49 overhang bracket. Uh, by field modifying it, you're going to take the interior leg out of the vertical component. And this will enable then reattach the exterior to where the interior on the, on the horizontal was attached. This will actually give you adjustability from 14 inches to 28 inches. Uh, typically, anything under 14 inches, all that, any of that dimension, we, we kind of... Don't like to go down that low, but we have in the past, but engineering would have to okay it. Always make sure that whenever you put a overhang bracket in place, you have some extra leeway, a safety factor uh, for where the uh, butt bar is actually hitting the concrete or resting against the concrete, just in case there is any slippage. You can also field modify how you want to actually put the bracket in place here by attaching boards to it or using boards to actually uh, incorporate or enhance the abilities of the uh, overhang bracket. We also have two different bolt load in this area. And these are the attachment plates to that with the coil rod will run through that actually attach to the overhang bracket to help secure it into position. Uh, we have the two hole system, which is what we currently are using. And the one hole, which was the old system that we used uh, and was swapped out primarily because of additional strength requirements required. You have an adjustment nut on the end of the bracket, which actually helps fine tune the camber of the bracket. So you can basically have three inches of height adjustment up or down. You can also use a wall plate adapter for the overhang bracket. Now the overhang bracket, uh, the wall plate adapter will attach to the overhang bracket in a hole that is punched out and actually has a bushing in it uh, as a spreader for the overhang bracket. What you would do is remove that bushing, attach the interior part of that wall bracket, then pass a bolt through that bracket, through the washer plate, a serrated washer plate, into the wall bracket that would attach to a insert that was cast in the concrete. Now, we do not recommend, we, we have in the past seen contractors use drop-in anchors, et cetera, for this type of application. Uh, that is all fine and good, but the big problem is you have to make sure you retorque it every day. Because what happens is uh, it was a standard expansion anchor like that, typically will vibrate loose uh, from the vibration of the overhang bricks because it is by you walking on it, it is creating a vibratory load. Guardrail receptacles for all the overhang brackets and extensions. We do have extensions that will give you an extra 20 inches of walkway space. Uh, not to be loaded with concrete. You can also attach a uh, C52 bolt uh, into the extender or into the overhang bracket. Uh, which uh, will help you put in a guardrail in place here for safety attach for safety rail attachments. Or you can use the C52P, 
which is a guardrail receptacle bracket that actually attached to it holds a piece of two by two pipe, aluminum pipe, uh, with the pockets already uh, attached to it for your guardrail. We also have a heavy duty overhang bracket, the C89 and the C89L bracket. Uh, both of these two brackets are considerably larger and heavier than our C49. Uh, they also are 72 inches and 90 inches in overall length. Uh, channel dimensions typically are four inches and six inches versus two and a half inches for standard uh, C49. The vertical adjustment is up to about 66 inches and overall uh, depth of availability. Big thing is these brackets will require a three quarter inch hanger. From there, we recommend using the century style hanger. Comes up with a 12,000 and 18,000 pound safe working load century hangers. Uh, the century hanger is now denoted with a new nomenclature that basically gives you the series of the hanger, the capacity of the hanger, the end dimension, whether it's a 45, 90, 15, et cetera, and if there is a bearing plate or not required. So we have all these series of a C110, C120, C130. All capacities of these hangers range from 6,000 to 18,000. And typically they're gonna be used, you're gonna use this type of a hanger with the three quarter inch dimension only. Just FYI for you, we also have a West Coast style bracket. This bracket here was developed and used for the West Coast and their seismic design of, bracket, of bridges. It basically bolts in with a one inch bolt going through the web of the girder. Uh, it uh, enables you to put the bracket in place and set your deck camber or uh, angle of your deck at a high angle because of the uh, yokes holding the wood that will actually form up your deck. All overhang brackets typically, the majority of the bridge projects typically run their finishing machines out on the overhang bracket. So contractors will set their finishing rail, speed rail out onto the overhang bracket. Uh, they will then set their finishing machine up to finish the concrete on the deck. Uh, the finishing machine is probably 90% of the weight that the overhang bracket has to support. And because of the options that are available from various contractors on different machines, we need to get the information from the contractor what the weight of the machine is and what the based off of what options he has installed on his finishing machine. Here's the machine running on this on the rails that we put out here. And this is the spacing of these wheels. And we want to know the number of wheels per side and the, what the spacing is between the wheels. And we are going to want to know what the wheel weights are going to be. Once the concrete is actually placed and completed application and textured wearing surface is achieved, Curing is applied in the form of either a chemical curing compound or a curing cover such as burlap or polyethylene or berlin. Thank you for that, uh, your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at training at DaytonSuperior.com or contact my personal email at chuckoak at DaytonSuperior.com. Thank you.